Thousands of Islamists packed Tahrir Square last Friday for the first time in nearly five months. The Muslim Brotherhood and the conservative Salafis had stayed off the streets since dominating parliamentary elections late last year. But with presidential elections six weeks away, both Islamist groups filled Tahrir in a show of force. Muslim brothers lobbied for their candidate, Khairat al shatir while the Salafis pushed for their favorite choice, Hazm Salat Abu Ismail. Both groups gathered to denounce the candidacy of Omar Suleiman, the shadowy former intelligence chief under ousted leader Hosni Mubarak. In the end, all three presidential hopefuls are now officially out of contention. On Tuesday, the Egyptian Presidential Elections Commission confirmed the disqualification of 10 candidates, including the two Islamists and Mubarak's cohort. Out of the fray, this man is emerging as one of the new favorites to be Egypt's next president. Five hundred miles south of Cairo and far from the political tumult, Dr. Abdel Minam Abu Futuh campaigned in the small upper Egyptian city of Edfu in relative obscurity. A moderate Islamist who appeals to so-called liberals and seculars, Abu Futuh has flown under the radar of the international media. Jump, jump inside. But boosted by a campaign driven by thousands of young volunteers and aided by the disqualifications of his leading competitors, Abu Futuh has quickly become one of the frontrunners in what could be Egypt's first free and fair presidential election. Abu Futuh, a 60-year-old physician, was one of the most prominent members of the Muslim Brotherhood. But in the last decade, his socially progressive views and calls to make the Muslim Brotherhood more democratic made him enemies among the group's conservative leadership. Shortly after the ouster of Hosni Mubarak, Abu Futuh defied a brotherhood dictum not to seek the presidency and declared his candidacy independent of the organization. The Muslim Brotherhood hierarchy expelled him. But Abu Futuh's removal from the brotherhood only bolstered his reputation among many Egyptians, who have become disillusioned with the organization's cooperation with the ruling military regime. Abu Futuh is arguably the only candidate with a chance of winning the election who can claim to represent the youth at the forefront of the Egyptian revolution. Even many ultras, the militant soccer fans who have led street protests since being brutally attacked in a match in Port Said two months ago, have declared their support for Abu Futuh. Abu Futuh has promised that his vice president would be less than 45 years old, as would be half the members of his administration. But the candidate's base extends beyond Egypt's rebellious youth. Here in Upper Egypt, while there may be little media coverage of his campaign, Abu Futuh is mobbed in the street and thousands turn up for his speeches. His impeccable Islamist credentials have won him support among the urban poor and rural populations, despite the Brotherhood's opposition to his candidacy. In contrast to the Brotherhood leadership and to other high-profile politicians, since the revolution, Abu Futuh has consistently stood by anti-government street protests while denouncing abuses of the military council. He has pledged civilian oversight of the armed forces and has demanded retrials for thousands of civilians sentenced in military tribunals. Abu Futuh has promised to overhaul Egypt's notorious interior ministry and end impunity for former officials of the Mubarak regime, as well as for members of the ruling military junta. <laughs>
أجهزة الأمن تقتحم بيوتكم في الصعيد وتخش على النساء والأطفال تروعهم من أجل أن تقبض على شاب صعيدي when news reaches the makeshift speaking hall that Mubarak's feared former spy chief Omar Suleiman is banned from the race, the crowd cheers and Abu Futuh responds. يسقط كل الفلول يسقط نظام مبارك كله اللي سقطت رؤوسه وما زالت سيقانه وجذوره موجودة وموجودة في رأس الدولة حتى الآن سنسقطهم إن شاء الله سنسقطهم إن شاء الله it's not the first time Abu Futuh has attacked Egypt's authoritarian leaders. In 1977, he famously angered then-President Anwar Sadat by criticizing his administration during a public appearance, a bold breach of protocol that could have led to his arrest or worse. As it turns out, Abu Futuh would be in prison for his political activities three times in the next three decades. In 1981, under Anwar Sadat, he was jailed for two months as part of a crackdown on Islamists. And under Hosni Mubarak, Abu Futuh was a political prisoner for five years beginning in 1996 and for another five months in 2009. Ever self-effacing, he rarely talks about his experience in prison. But he does not hold back when criticizing U.S. policy in the region. He has questioned Egypt's reliance on U.S. aid, and he has vowed to open the Egyptian border with Gaza. وزن هو غرع الأمريكان والنظام الأمريكي في أزمة مالية ضخمة مش عارف يطلع منها. While other candidates are either loved or hated depending on the demographic, Abu Fatuh has managed to be all things to all people, and he has assembled an eclectic team to run his campaign. His campaign manager works for the multinational company 3M, and his political advisor is a leftist academic. And unlike other Islamist candidates, Abu Fatuh's campaign has attracted women who don't wear the headscarf and Coptic Christians to its ranks. In Edfu, Abu Fatuh visited doctors and lawyers, but he spent half the day talking with workers at state-owned factories. The floundering Egyptian economy is at the heart of the presidential race, even in tourist destinations like Luxor, where Abu Fatuh campaigned on Sunday. People here complain of a lack of jobs and worsening living conditions. Abu Futuh has made education and healthcare the pillars of his domestic platform, pledging to multiply the budgets for both areas. Economic and social hardship was at the root of the revolution as much as a desire for civil and political rights. And Abu Futuh's social justice platform has resonated with many Egyptians. <laughs> While Abu Fatuh's prospects are stronger than ever, the electoral road ahead is uncertain and unpredictable. Abu Fatuh still lacks the name recognition of other leading candidates, and he does not have the organized and expansive support base such as that commanded by the Muslim Brotherhood. And nobody is discounting the possibility of fraud or other intervention by the military council. With conservative Islamist preacher Hazm Salah Abu Ismail, Muslim Brotherhood business magnate Khairat al shatir and notorious former spy chief Omar Suleiman all out of the race, three other presidential candidates now pose the greatest challenge to Abdul Minam Abu Futuh. One is an Islamist, and two are former regime members. Mohammed Mursi is head of the Muslim Brotherhood's political party, and he's the backup choice to al-Shatir, 
Ahmed Shafiq is a former Air Force commander who served as Prime Minister during Mubarak's final days. And most prominently, Amr Musa is former head of the Arab League and a foreign minister under Mubarak. Amr Musa officially launched his campaign on Wednesday in a slum on the outskirts of Cairo. Musa is a household name since his days as Mubarak's foreign minister. His campaign is well funded and has no lack of media coverage. For more than a year, Musa has been picked as a favorite to win the election and at least one poll gives him a sizable lead. But while he has tried to distance himself from Mubarak, many Egyptians still see him as a falul, or remnant of the old regime. If no candidate wins more than 50% of the vote in the first round election slated for May 23rd and May 24th, as is expected, a second round of balloting between the top two contenders is scheduled for June 16th and June 17th. This is Re Lindsay in Cairo, Egypt.